When it comes to cooled astronomy cameras, there's a massive choice on the market today. And they all just seem to come in different shapes and colors. But is this the only difference between these cameras? Today, I'm going to introduce to you a new camera by Altair Astro, and you can decide for yourself. My name's Glenn, and you're watching Astrobloke. Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. On my last video, I featured a scope and camera that was sent to me by Altair Astro, but I focused mainly on the scope. So today's video is gonna be about the camera. So this is the Altair Astro Hypercam 533 Color ProTech cooled camera. This uses the same excellent Sony IMX533 sensor that you'll find in other astronomy cameras. It gives you a 14-bit sensor with a 3.76 pixel size. The sensor is back illuminated so you get zero amp glow. But this is where the similarities end. Firstly, all Altair Astro ProTech cameras come in an armoured case like this. Inside, you'll not only find the camera, but you also get a good quality USB 3.0b lead, and more importantly, a power supply to run your camera, so you have everything you need to get the camera up and running. The camera itself comes packed with loads of extra features. So one thing that I think is unique to uh, Altair Astro is rather than using just some desiccant tablets inside to uh, take up any moisture, their cameras come with a sealed gas chamber on their sensor. And they've got a little label over it here to warn you not to undo it. But if you do, they will help you by regassing it. But that will stop any dust or moisture getting into the sensor and they also give a two year guarantee of a frost free sensor. The sensor cover itself has an anti reflective coating but also a built in UV IR cup filter. Now that's an excellent addition which means you're ready to go imaging straight away if you're doing broadband targets and in a dark location which I'm in. Um, and I'll show you some examples of that uh, in a bit. The sensor window is also heated, so it's got a built-in dew heater, which I think is an excellent addition um, and works really well. The uh, back of the camera has normal inputs, so you've got your USB 3.0b and your power input here and you've got two USB outs, so that's nice and useful for running your guide cam or filter wheel or focuser. You've got some outputs there. There's also some little LED lights on the back in red, and all they do is they give you sort of a, a, little, a little feedback on what's working on the camera, so whether it's attached to the system, it's got power, you've got the fan, and you've also got the tech calling. So you can see at a glance that everything is and should be working. Now one change that's happened to the Altair cameras recently is they've redesigned the body and they're now coming with an inbuilt uh, tilt ring. Uh, and I think this is a brilliant addition. Now the back uh, spacing to the filter for on Altair cameras is normally 17.5 millimeters and they've reconfigured uh, the camera so it's still that with the ring in place. Um, I do believe they're going to be doing a retro ring for the older cameras, but that will add a little bit uh, to the backspacing, maybe about five millimeters. One of the things I thought was a really good thing with their tilt ring was it had four adjustments on the corners. Um, my pre previous ones I've used have only had three, and I think four makes more sense intuitively with the corners so if you've got tilt in one corner, it's gonna make it a little bit easier to make those adjustments. I've not had to use it or make any adjustments, but it looks really good, and I think it's a great addition to their cameras. 
a lot of features, I think you'll agree. But what about the price? Well, again, Altair Astro get my vote. So jumping onto their website, you can see here that the color version of the 533 is 899 pounds new, but the mono version is just a hundred pounds more at 999 pounds. I think this is a very competitive price and that small extra for a mono jump is really good. If you're thinking of getting into mono, this would be a great camera to consider. Yes, you may need to pay out for some filters and possibly a filter wheel. At least you're not paying a huge premium for a mono camera. I think this is a great camera for a step into mono imaging, but the color camera is brilliant too. I've had a great time using it. So what is it like to use? Well, I've had uh, a lot of fun using this camera. It's been extremely reliable. Um, I use Nina for my acquisition software. Um, it connected immediately through uh, native drivers, so I had no connectivity issues. Its cooling was great. It uses uh, two-stage cooling. It will go minus 35 degrees Celsius from ambient, and it cooled. Yeah, not, didn't take long at all. It, it was nice and steady, really good. Um, I've used this with the scope that Altair sent me, which was their Starwave 60 ED and I actually got some really nice images. Um, so I've shown these on my previous video, but I'm gonna show them to you again here so that you can see the capabilities that this can uh, do. So the first image is the Pinwheel Galaxy, and uh, I do wanna apologize first of all for the dust motes on this. I wasn't very organized and I forgot to take flats and I'd already taken the image train apart. But um, the pinwheel, I got two hours uh, of five minute subs. And this with, with no filter. So I just used the built-in UV IR cut filter from the camera. And as you can see, it's done a marvelous job. The next image I took was the Elephant's Trunk Nebula. And uh, I was taking 10 minute subs on this and I got four and a half hours in total. And I uh, used a dual narrowband filter by uh, Altair Astro. It's their six nanometer HA and O3 Ultra filter, which I thought was a really nice filter. I had it in one of their magnetic filter drawers and it did a great job. So that's that image. I then moved on to another narrowband target, which was the Crescent Nebula. And on this, I was taking 10 minute subs again and I got two and a half hours of data. Again, a very nice image. Finally, I wanted to push the camera, well, and the scope setup that I had a little bit, so I went for a slightly more challenging target, which was the Dark Shark Nebula, which is LDN1235. I managed to get three hours on this of five minute subs, and again, using no filter, just the UV IR cup filter that's built into the camera. And I was really impressed with the image that came back from this. I would like to do some more so I get some more data because I do think there's a lot more to reveal, but this is a really great setup and it gave me some nice results. As you can see, it's a really nice sensitive camera and gives good results, but I really wanted to try it out on something else. So in my observatory, I've got a 10 inch Newtonian, uh, an Orion Optics CT10, that's 1200 millimeters focal length and f 4.8. So I got this camera on that rig and um, I kept it, as I would say, one shot color. So I kept it just uh, using the UV IR cut filter. And um, at the time, everybody was taking images of M101, the Pinwheel Galaxy, because of the supernova activity going on within that uh, area. So I slew to M101 and took some images of that. And I'm gonna show you that in a moment. I thought that came out very well. I then decided to take some images of a, a target I've never taken before, which was the Cat's Eye Nebula. And um, I took some data with no filter, just the UV IR cup. And then I used the six nanometer HA and O3 dual band filter. Um, and got some more data with that. And I'm really pleased with how that's turned out. Um, it's a project actually that I'm working on. I'm getting some more data because I want to try and reveal more of the center core, 
but I'm very pleased with the image that came out from the 533. Um, I think it's an excellent camera. In fact, I liked it so much that when I'm next in the market for a camera, Altair Astro are gonna be my uh, make that I'm gonna go for. Now they do sell a complete range of cameras, so I've got a link in my description to their website. Um, go on there, have a look, they've got loads of cameras, but they're very helpful. If you ask them any questions, they'll come back to you and advise you on what they think you should go for. Um, they've got a lovely range of cameras and they're all very competitively priced, so they're definitely worth checking out. So I'm gonna leave you now with these two images that I've taken on the uh, 10 inch Newtonian and the 533 color camera. I hope you enjoy them. I certainly enjoyed taking them. And uh, thank you ever so much for watching the channel and your support. And until next time, please take care. And of course, clear skies.